Uh, hello, it is Saturday, June 26th, um, here in sunny Arizona. I'm Annette, this is Annette Zaker, and this is Law Student Member 55. So I know, surprising, less than two weeks and I'm already back, but it was a very busy two weeks, so I figured um, it was a good opportunity. So no music today. Uh, Mike's actually gone to his lesson, so um, it's quiet. It's just me and the dogs, if, which I'm sure you will see wandering around behind me. Um, last video, the white background was a little stark, so I thought we'd get a new view today. This is actually my work desk here in the front room where I spend a good amount of my day. So um, Mike uses the office and I work out here. So anyway, um, busy couple of weeks, uh, a little bit of travel, which I talked about last time. Okay, that was a cut because the challenge with me being home with the dogs and Mike being gone is that they will bark at every little thing. So I will do my best to cut out the barks because <laughs> um, they can be somewhat surprising if you're not used to them. Anyway, uh, yeah, well, so we had a little bit, had a little bit of travel. Um, good amount of stitching. I have a nice pile here. Um, and I did a 10 stitch con weekend B, so I got a little bit of stash to show. Just a little. Not too bad. Um, and I got a haircut, which is so nice. <laughs> All right, so what have I been working on, or let's, what have I finished since we last spoke? So I finished a couple things. Um, I showed the May, May stocking in progress, the tulip, the tulip stocking. I have since finished it. So here it is. This is um, sugared violets and poblano pepper was the green that I couldn't remember last time. Um, but that's the May stocking all done. Well, that one's complete. I showed my um, 25 by 25 stitches a day piece and said I was hoping to finish it at StitchCon. I did. I finished it on Friday and was able to ring the bell at StitchCon. So there it is, all done. And I have picked a new 25 by 7 piece. Okay, yes, sorry, again. Mm. Yes, animals, family, all right. Uh, so I picked a new 25 by 7 piece, which I'll show you right now. Might as well show you right now, because it's on the top of the pile. Still using my Stitch Folk uh, red toil bag. And I've got a couple three days in this already. Um, if I have a picture of where it was when I started, I'll put that up. If not, you'll just have to imagine. All right. So here's the new 25 by 7 piece. It's uh, Michael Powell's Mini Greek. There it is. And here's where we are so far. So, and I'm sure you can guess that the reason I've gotten bogged down on this is this is all stitched right here. It's all white on white, so. Let me tell a little bit. It's a little bit better, all right. So I've kind of worked my way up into the sky. The sky's all half stitches, so um, I'm gonna work my way down from the sky. So I've got, I've got the sky here, so I'll work more over here and then start working down. So yep, there it is. So that's the new daily piece. Of. Right. Um, the other things that I worked on, um, I did successfully do my first um, Crystal Academy lesson class, whatever you want to call it, um, and that was to work on the Weaver's Tapestry. Um, so I added a band, essentially. This actually worked for Magical Stitches as well, so... I put in a good thousand stitches on that. I added this nice viney band here. It's hard to see the variegation, but it's a beautiful purple and teal color. So that completed my first Crystal Academy assignment. It'll come back out again in August for the next round. Might work on it before then. Who knows? Maybe not. Um, the other piece that I worked on, and I worked on this at StitchCon. 
um, a little bit. And that is the Summer House Stitch Works. I got that wrong last time. Summer House Stitch Works Tales from the Sea. Um, I started the next, I got the wave across and I started the next block. So, this is two over two, um, Weeks Dye Works, tiny bit of DMC on Picture This Plus 36 count fresco. However, the piece that got, has gotten the most work, and it's just because it's been easy, is Carolyn Manning's Sunset. So here's the picture. I'm doing the large one. And here's where we are right now. So pretty lots of progress I know I added these two squares and this so quite a bit um, I'm using it for magical stitches for monsters so I need about another 400 stitches or so to finish my monsters and I need another three days to finish my whip go goal so it'll my I'm hoping to get to 25 percent I'm at 21 21 percent and change right now per pattern keeper so i'm kind of hoping that i can get to 25 percent um, before i put it down this month which will be monday or tuesday because i only need three more days so i'll do a little bit today i probably won't work on it tomorrow and then maybe monday and tuesday so yeah there we go so that's coming along it's just it's the colors are just amazing so it got quite a bit of work. It didn't get any work at StitchCon, but um, it got work here. And then I did have a new start at StitchCon. That's in my Pam bag. So I started an oldie but a goodie. Nighttime in Old Town. Hello from Liz Matthews. And she was there, and I got to say hello to her which was kind of nice, so so not much of a start. Uh, a lot of counting was involved. Let's see. There we go. It's just green, lots of green. Oh. This is 35 count uh, Weeks Style Works linen in the color linen, so. It's pretty. It's all DMC, so. Oh. This has got, I mean, it's got houses and trees and letters and stuff, so it'll be good for magical stitches stuff, so I'm sure it'll come back out. And that's all I worked on while I was gone. That's all I worked on in the last two weeks, um, which is pretty good, I think. Pretty good assortment. Um, it always surprises me when I go back to my little tracking sheet where I keep track of what pieces I've worked on on any given day, how many there are in a short time period. But All right, so let's talk about StitchCon. Uh, it was weekend B. I went with three other friends so um, that I usually, you know, that I've known for close to 20 years through the various um, bulletin boards, Facebook, that kind of stuff. So. We kind of converged there because we haven't seen each other for a while, obviously, with everything going on. So we had four of five seats at our little round table. Um, and we then had a fifth person join our table. Hi, Bailey. So um, Bailey joined. She is Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields Cross Stitch. I'm sorry, Bailey. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it at the bottom here and I'll link her channel. I'll link her foster channel um, below. But she's also on Instagram. So so Bailey joined our little group for the weekend and we had a, a marvelous time. She is a um, relatively new stitcher, so we had great fun corrupting her and showing her all kinds of fun things because uh, we've all been stitching for uh, many, many years. So it was great. She, she fit in beautifully to our little group. So um, anyway, so I left on Thursday relatively early flight for me 
Um, so I didn't stitch as much on the flight. I did nap quite a bit. Um, I had to change planes in Houston, which was not a big deal. Other than the fact that the flight was late and the connection was short. Um, and so there was a whole lot of, uh, it was very fast walking across the width of the Houston terminal. Of course, it's, you know, when you have to change, it's always from one end to the other, the terminal. Um, but made it, no problem, got into Cincinnati, um, was met at the airport by one of my friends that actually lives in Cincinnati, and off we went to meet with everybody else, get some dinner, check in the hotel, all those fun things. Saw the stitching room, which was just a, a large conference ballroom, you know, it, just a big space. Uh, dinner, no problem. Saturday was we did check in so I did check in and got my uh, got my name tag my name tag and the the bit of a swag kind of bag it was just the bag and um, some charts a little folio it was you know just a, a gift of a ornament a clear ornament which I'm sure you've seen on other Flosty channels so I'm not gonna go through all that but met Pam and Steph on that first day, which was very nice. Of course, they don't know me from Adam, which is fine, but it was nice to, to greet them by name. Um, Saturday, lots of stitching, a bit of shopping. I took my, I was part of the first Smalls Exchange, the Red Exchange on Saturday afternoon. So the piece that I showed last time that was fully finished um, in the black acrylic tray was my exchange. Uh, so I met the, the lady that picked that up, which was great. And I picked up a very unique item. I, I was looking for something smaller. Obviously, I was flying, right, suitcase. So I couldn't, I didn't want to pick up, you know, a big bag that potentially had a large item inside. Cause, and there were, there were some beautifully done boxes, trays, that kind of stuff. Um, even though the stitching was small, the finishing was, was larger and I didn't want to pick up anything that I knew I was going to have a challenge in the space that I had in the suitcase. So I stuck with something that was, um, looked like it was a little smaller. Um, and interestingly enough, it was actually wrapped in fabric. It was wrapped in this fabric. Now the fabric or the wrapping is supposed to give a hint as to what's inside. So obviously there was something bug related, which is fine. I'm good with that. Um, and in reality, what I got was an exchange from Amy, Amy Parrott, who was the mastermind behind the Brood X um, needle minder with the cicada, right? And what she had made was this lovely tea towel. It's a tea towel. Towel. And it's got the embroidered cicada on it. It's kind of fun. Very fun, right? Um, so this, obviously the fabric, which I will be able to use, and then the needle minder, which is very fun. So, um, and, a, and a nice card, but yeah. So that was the exchange that I brought home. And I, like I said, I will definitely use the fabric in some form or fashion. On the topic of cicadas, we pretty much missed the bulk of them. Um, I think I saw a total of five while I was there between Thursday and Sunday. And all but one of them were dead, essentially. They were either on the sidewalk or one run flew into the car. Not inside the car, but like hit the windshield, right? Um, I did see one on a, uh, bush outside the front. I took a picture so you can see, you can see him. Uh, but that was about it there. It, it, otherwise it wasn't there. What we did have were a lot of storms, uh, lightning. We did have a tornado warning, which was kind of fun. Um, and so we were locked into the, into the basement there of the convention center. The stitching room was in the lower level of the convention center. And so we were kind of locked in for a half an hour while the tornado warning passed by. Um, and my room was, was quite, was on the sixth floor. So when I went back that night, I could see the lightning play out over the sky 
um, well into the into the evening hours. So that was it was pretty, and it was a nice change from what I'm used to here in Arizona. So so that was good. Um, so weather was more of our um, complicating factor. Now. The cicadas did make their mark because when we went into the stitching room on Thursday evening at the convention center, it was definitely warm in the room, right? Even for me. Um, it was definitely a little, a little toasty in the room, kind of humid. Um, and you could tell that Barbara and the rest of the stitch kind of team were, de were, were desperately trying to figure out what the heck was going on, right? Because that was not something that they had experienced the previous weekend. Come to find out, what we learned the next day was that the cicadas really liked the air conditioning unit, and so they overwhelmed it and basically shut it down. So the convention center team worked through the night on Thursday night to get it cleaned out and um, re, you know, <laughs> redone, reconnected, all of that, so that it was nice and cool again on Friday morning when we came back into the stitching room. So. Even though we didn't see a lot of cicadas in the weekend, they definitely made their mark. So, so Saturday again, um, we we did take our little table, um, took the stitchy bus, which is a fun, just a, a fun little school bus that's all painted red. Took the stitchy bus to Keepsakes, and we had our first visit to Keepsakes. Now, one of the gals at the table does live in the Cincinnati area, but it's still quite a haul for her to, it, she lives like on the opposite side of town from where Keepsake is, so she does not go there regularly. Um, so it was still uh, almost a new experience for her, but Keepsakes is in a house. Um, and so as you can imagine, it's lots of essentially small rooms, upstairs, downstairs, and there's just stuff everywhere. Um, and I know even though I spent an hour there and did go into every room and look at as much as I could. I know when I go back next year, because I'm definitely going to do Stitch Gun again next year. Um, when I go back next year, I'm sure I will see things next year that I didn't see this year. So um, it's a wonderful shop if you have the opportunity. So many things and just the people are, are just so nice. You know, I had a chance to, to chat with several of the of the folks that are there and just very nice people. So it's very welcoming. Um, of course it was raining a bit, which was interesting. And again, I enjoyed it. Not something that I'm used to often to have rain, you know, the majority of the day. So it was, it was wonderful. It smelled so good. It just smelled so good, the rain. Um, so Saturday, uh, went to dinner Saturday night at an amazing Italian restaurant. It was just a little, little ways down the street, quite tasty. Um, and that was that, and Saturday, Sunday, so that was Friday. Friday, we did all the running around. Saturday, Friday night, we went to dinner. Sorry, I've got my days mixed up. Saturday was really just stitching and going in and out of the small, annex, the Keepsakes Annex, which was right there in the convention center, which had um, multiple trunk shows and all kinds of things, which I'll show you here in just a minute, um, what I bought between Keepsakes and the Annex because of course I had to buy stuff, right? I mean, of course. Um, so Saturday was stitching and just, there were two more exchanges that we could watch. And um, it was a wonderful weekend. There was really no agenda. And it was just nice to sit, sit with friends that I haven't seen for a while, be able to catch up with them be able to kind of walk around, meet new people, um, say hello to folks, have folks come say hello to me. Um, it was just, it was just really nice. A very low key social, not, um, not very structured, not a lot of pressure. It was just a perfect weekend getaway, perfect weekend getaway. Um, the only hiccup really came on Sunday. My original flight was scheduled to leave approximately five o'clock in the afternoon, right? Um, flying east to west, I tend to leave later because I gained time in time zones. I was still going to be home by 8 o'clock on Sunday night. But I got an alert around 10 o'clock that my flight had been canceled. I'm assuming it was due to weather. There was no explanation given. All I knew is that the flight was canceled. And when I went into um, the airline app that I have on my phone to rebook, all of the evening flights have been canceled. So 
to me that says weather somewhere. It might not have been weather in Ohio, but it was weather somewhere that's, that was disrupting the service. And there was one, essentially one flight left leaving Cincinnati that I could get and make a connection to Phoenix, and that was leaving approximately 1230. Um, it was just after 10 o'clock at that point. So some very hurried packing up. Most I had most everything packed. We had already checked out of the hotel, suitcase was in the car, all that was done. Um, so I really just had to, to pack up my stitching bag right then and there. So we did that super quick um, and said goodbye to um, some folks. One of our table was had was planning to leave when we left, or was planning to leave at around noon. She obviously left a little earlier because she left when I did. Um, and then there were a couple of other folks there that I wanted to say goodbye to, so I did. And then we were on the road to the airport. <laughs> Again, no problem, got there in plenty of time, checked in, got on the flight, and um, made it to Chicago, changed flights, flew back to Cleveland, did not change planes, and then actually made it home to Arizona a couple hours earlier than I norm than was planned. So, um, not bad. I will say, the flight was interesting. Um, obviously, masks were required in the airport and on the plane the whole time. Fine, it was not a big deal. Um, limited service, I mean, I fly Southwest, which doesn't have the most fancy all-inclusive service anyway on the flights, um, but even it was severely limited. You only had a you know, it was water or a soda, you know, a couple of varieties of soda. That was about it. And then um, some sort of snack, that was all. So uh, it was just, I did, I did get managed Starbucks in the Chicago airport. No, I didn't manage Starbucks in the Chicago airport. They don't have Starbucks. I managed Starbucks in the Cincinnati airport before I got on the flight, which was nice. So... Overall, not bad. Um, not bad. It was nice to have a weekend away, um, just to change the scenery, spend some time with friends, and I will definitely be signing up next year. If you are interested in attending StitchCon next year, um, information is supposed to come out for next year for how to sign up, the dates, all of that is supposed to come out um, around July 4th or, or just after. Um, they told us on Sunday night that that's when the public announcement would come out. Um, I believe there was some discussion that they were going to make some changes as to how you signed up for um, the event next year, which is fine. Um, it was pretty seamless this year. There were um, just about 220 people or so. Hey. There are about 220 uh, folks at Weekend B um, with a capacity of 300. Uh, the, the tables were spaced out. There were five people at the table. The tables were spaced out, plenty of room to move around. It was real good. I will say that the freebie tables were amazing. So much stuff. And the brag tables, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So many absolutely gorgeous pieces and just amazing stuff on there do hunt down there um pam and steph did videos included videos of both weekends brag tables in their one of their recent um floss tubes so if you want to see all everything that was on those tables um go check out their video all right so what did i buy so here's what i bought didn't buy that all right so i made one trip to keepsakes um, and I didn't get that much at keepsakes. Let's see, I got that, I got that. That. Obviously, I have the required um, green green plaid bags. They were using these in both the annex as well as at keepsakes. I've taken everything out of the bag, so just to make it easier to pack. So let's see if I can remember what I bought where. I don't know. 
Uh, that was a keepsake. That was a keepsake. That's was a keepsake. Okay. All right. I think I got it. This is all annex stuff. All right. So when I got a keepsakes, I bought a piece of. I bought a piece of 36 count Dames of the Needle fabric. I love Dames of the Needle. Um, it's a fat eighth. Ruby, Ruby Murray is the color, but it was just a nice neutral 36 count. <clears throat> I bought a chart clip, unfortunately. I've got it over there. Here's what it is. So it's a little thing that you clip on your Q-snap and then it'll hold your chart. Works beautifully, I have to say. I bought the this tiny, tiny pair of pink scissors. Very cute. I bought um, Plum Street's The Equality Sampler. This was one of two charts that were on my shopping list for StitchCon. So I, this was the second of the, the charts on the list, so I got that. Um, I also bought, I got this, um, it's a free chart. Here's my heart. I may not make the chart, but essentially the chart was free if you bought three the three new classic color works. So I, I really just bought the thread, right? And then finally I bought a piece of 35 count wild bird seed legacy linen. So love legacy linen. So that was my keepsakes shop. Everything else um, that I bought came from the annex and the trunk shows um, that were there. I think I made three trips to the annex. Three. Um, all right. So had to have the StitchCon, you know, memorabilia. So a uh, needle minder, StitchCon, and a um, floss keep from Sampling of Memories, StitchCon. I found um, this. Scissor Fog, Mickey Mouse, Scissor Fog, pretty cute. They had a JBW, JBW trunk show there, so I ended up with Dahlia's in the round and Halloween in the round, because they were both with models there. Um, there was also a Heart in Hand trunk show. Um, so I got It Was Always You. Got the um, Christmas square dance. The one, I wanted this one with the uh, Nutcracker square that, and the Nativity square. Uh, but you can do them all three in one piece, which is probably what I'll end up doing. And then the first chart that was on my list to look for was Friendship Garden. So I got that. Right. Um, there was fabric, so I bought, oh no, the last chart I got was a Sue Hillis, uh, Rotary and Party, Sue Hillis, got that, problem, I don't know, I don't know if I'll get it right or not, we'll see. Fabric, so I got three additional pieces of Fabric. Um, this is Merlot. Oh, these are all, I'm pretty sure these are all 36 count. This is 36 count. This is Merlot from Fiber on OM. This is Stone Washed from Under the Sea. Also 36 count. And this is. Cypress. Cypress. I think this one is fiber on the whim. Fiber on the whim as well. I'm pretty sure it's fiber on the whim. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry with the coughing. <coughs> and then finally, I got a project bag. Game of Thrones project bag. So. On the freebie table, I picked up just a couple of items. I picked up a couple of items for a couple other people, so I'm not going to show you those. But I picked up two items for me. Um, the first was this Mill Hill 
Halloween and Mill Hill. Can't go wrong. And then the second one is just uh, drawn thread, a little black work. So those were the two items, just the two items on the free. I put way more than two items on the freebie table, but those were the two that I picked up for me. All right. So that was the extent of my StitchCon shopping and stash, and I didn't get anything in the mail while I was gone. Um, and in fact, I don't, I don't think I have anything even waiting on order at this point. So, all right, so plans. So what's next, what's next? Well, um, sun, like I said, Sunset needs at least three more days to finish off the Whipco Square, so I'll be doing that. Um, I have my June stocking kitted up and ready to go. I'm going to do the, the honeysuckle one. Um, so, um, here's the threads and fabric all ready to go for that. I had to do some substitution because I didn't have the called for stuff in stash, but that's fine. I made some good substitutions. And then for, um, this week's Crystal Academy class my whip for the week that I should have started on Monday but haven't started yet and will probably do today and tomorrow is cardinal points so I need to do 750 stitches in cardinal points this week um, no problem like I said between today and tomorrow between uh, baseball uh, basketball I'm actually watching basketball which is not something I ever thought I would say um, anyway here's my starting point little teeny tiny corner in the lower left so plenty of places to go from here I thought I had more done isn't that always the case so yeah anyway so that'll get 750 stitches for the current class um, and then Monday there's a new class which will be a new piece so so that's the plan for the remainder of the month on the 30th on Wednesday the new the next part of linen and threads sale will come out and so I am hoping to have sunset taken care of cardinal points taken care of so that I can go ahead and do that um, start that on Wednesday we'll see what that looks like all right finally so that's it for stitching that's it for stitching so if that's what you're interested in Thanks so much. Have a great time. I did finish two books, though, so let's talk about those real quick. Two books. The first book that I finished while I was gone was called The Duke and I, which is the first book from Julia Quinn of Bridgerton, right? So it's the first Bridgerton book. If I had read the book and not watched the series on Netflix, it would have gotten a better... It probably would have gotten a little bit of better rating. If you are thinking about reading the book because you watched the series on Netflix and you really enjoyed it, this is the rare instance where the TV show slash movie is far better than the book. Okay, The thing about the book is that unlike the TV series, it is single-threaded. The only plot and the only storyline that you get in the book are Daphne and Simon. That's it. There's no, in fact, the queen is not there. Um, there's no, I mean, while you meet Anthony and Benedict and Colin and the rest of the Bridgerton family, you don't see anything other than how they are involved with Daphne and Simon's story. And Daphne and Simon's story is pretty much exactly what you saw in the, TV, in the, in the series, pretty much. Um, so there's no, there's no other storylines that are woven in. Um, you don't get the Featheringtons. You don't get, um, you, there's a lot that you don't get. Okay, so if you're only interested in Daphne and Simon's story and a retelling of that, because you pretty much already know how it works out, right, if you watch the series, then fine. Um, but if you are hoping for something more, which is usually what you find in the book, you know, there's more backstory, there's more, more context, more richness to the story, you're not going to find that this time. You're not going to find that. Um, so the, yeah, you're not. 
So it was okay. I probably will not go on and um, read. I'll just wait for Netflix and be surprised and watch the series and be done with it. So the other book that I um, started and finished recently was from Jennifer Armentrout, who is a new author to me, uh, the Dark Elemental series. It's a, it's a three book series. And the first book is called White Hot Kiss. Um, it was what I would consider a paranormal some romance, not a whole lot, um, but it's definitely a paranormal demons, angels, that kind of stuff. It was quite good, I have to say. It was a nice, um, a nice story. Some definitely different um, takes on you know what you usually see in a demon and angel type story. Um, and I am reading in the process of reading the second one, so I would recommend that if you enjoy that type of light, paranormally kind of sort of romancy but not really stories i mean there's definite romance but it's not like we're not talking jr ward here we're talking <laughs> it's, a, it's a much tamer version but that's okay it's good um so those are the only two that i've read so far i'm also uh have started another book by mark aldridge called um agatha christie's poirot it is actually non-fiction it's a non-fiction book about a fictional character How's that? Um, and it talks about um, the development and the stories and, and what was going on with Miss Christie's life. And it's very interesting. Of course, um, I am a huge Agatha Christie fan. Poirot is definitely my favorite. Um, so it's been very interesting. Um, but it's, it's a much meatier book. It's much larger. So I'm taking it a little bit at a time to enjoy. But that's really the other, let's see, other notable thing that I'm reading. That's an in-progress stuff. So, all right. So with that... I want you to have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, um, or whenever you're watching this. I know that there are so many people out there to watch, and I really appreciate you taking the time um, to spend some with me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.